Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. Today we are doing a follow-up review of the Hubson Zeno. It's been about 10 months, so you could say this is like the 10 months later review with a bunch of updates. So today, these are the current updates as of October 2019, the latest updates. And so we're going to see how this thing does today. If it's improved over the last 10 months, I know the price has dropped incredibly uh, to like between two and three hundred dollars so it's gone down about half the price so this might be a good option if it's improved for the Christmas season if you want to get into a cheap 4k GPS drone this may be the one for you if it has improved but we're gonna test all that today and really put it through its paces so let's get started So I gotta say guys, this thing isn't the easiest to update. They're still using the older kind of plug-in technique where you can't uh, update it from your phone like wirelessly like other, like say DJI drones can. You've actually got to plug into the drone, hook it up to your computer with the battery off to update the flight controller. You gotta plug in the battery and you have to insert a file into the SD card and boot up um, the drone to update like the camera and other stuff and then this one's also very hard to update the controller you've got to um, ground out two pins on this little port here on the bottom and then you have to plug it in and update it as well to your from your computer so not the easiest one to update but if it's at a really good price it might be worthwhile so anyway here we go you know it's still kind of weird to register this it's a little bit strange so i could never really register a login and just always doesn't work so I'm just bypassing the whole login or register thing and then we're just going to go straight into a device here okay enter main interface and bind to aircraft so this one still you have to kind of bind it to the controller and the phone and everything so we just press ok and then we have to um, put your phone like right next to the the quad itself because it wants to see how good the accuracy is on the GPS. So we'll just set it next to it. Oh, it wants to format the SD card. That's a new, I have a 128 gigabyte in there. So we're gonna see how that does. So right now it's checking SD card speed. Do not pull the card out. This is a high speed 128 gig for like 4K footage. Uh, hopefully it's it's gonna there you go SD card speed pass wow so it's checking all that stuff to make sure it's all compatible that's good to know okay so I did all my calibrations at home and it's still not asking me for any compass calibration so I guess it thinks it's okay uh, let's go ahead and make sure we're recording in 4k so we got the video to camera let's switch to video mode let's just take a quick picture like this and I'll have it up on the screen right there I'll go ahead and put that picture up. We'll take some when we're up in the sky as well, if I can remember. 15 satellites, you can see on the top right, 100% power. So let's go ahead and just take off. I'm just gonna use the screen takeoff here. Let's record video. Okay, so that is recording. And let's take off. Are you sure? Okay, yes. All right, we're also gonna be timing this uh, flight and we can actually time it by seeing the recording on the right hand side the video recording let's just let it sit here for a sec kind of get its bearings and this is where the original test like 10 months ago um, had issues where it couldn't really hold its position very well especially when you zoomed around and turned and stopped it would drop and have weird issues so we're going to test all that first now remember this one doesn't have any vision optical sensors to see the ground it's just going off a barometer inside of it so can't really hold it too too much against it um, because of that reason if it does kind of fluctuate that's fine so let's just go ahead and go i'm in uh, normal mode again kind of weird they i think they should really have some contrast on the lettering here because it's hard to see the buttons and stuff so maybe they can eventually improve that so i'm just going to go uh, full stick forward and remember, we are in um, GPS mode, so it's dropping still a little bit. Maybe I'll go up a little bit more just to give it the benefit of the doubt. So just in GPS mode, now I'm going towards the wind. There's a little bit of a breeze from my back. I want to say about zero to five. And so it's still fluctuating. 
but you know this is a cheap drone but man I gotta say that A3 is also a cheap drone that Femi A3 and that thing is just rock solid control so full stick forward and GPS kind of coming into the wind we're gonna do a full turn well that's a lot better than before let's try a left turn okay well looks like they improved it guys left turn dropping a little but still tolerable full stick and a right turn remember my initial review that thing dropped down to hit the ground so they've definitely improved that and all the while i'm doing this we're watching the video right guys so definitely uh leaps and bounds better than my initial review for a super cheap quad this might be something to look at now Okay, I saw the video get a little jerky. Hey guys, again, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. You guys are the ones that make this channel successful. So a big mahalo to all you guys in Hawaii and not in Hawaii, across the world that tune in to my channels. Just a big, big shaka to you guys. Aloha. Me and the family really enjoy you guys uh, watching our videos. Anyway, so what I might do is actually track Sanaya. I got her with me over here. I might track her in a second, but let's just do a couple of more things. Um, let's go up a little bit, get into some wind. There's the video, guys. Let's see how good that 4K video is up there. I'm just gonna hover here for a second and I'm gonna rotate the, kim the gimbal. I did turn down the rotation rate to about 15%. You know what I mean? So that's how it's looking. Interestingly though, in my FPV video, well, I'll have both up on the screen, the 4K and my FPV I'm recording on my phone. On my phone, it looks a little choppy. When I go up and down, it's like starting and stopping a little. We'll see how it is. Go ahead and double check that in the video and uh, just see how that is for you. Another thing that was weird um, on the first flight review 10 months ago was this thing had a mind of its own. When you got out to a, a little bit of a distance, it just seemed to want to like wander around. So let's see if that's better. We'll just go not too far, just a ways out. And all the while keeping kind of a, um, a note, notation on the video signal on the FPV. Don't want to go over any houses. So let's not go directly over the house. Go out that way. Okay, well definitely better range than my A3. Man, my A3 for some reason doesn't want to go any further than, you know, about, um, gosh, I want to say 600 feet before I lose all telemetry. So this is better than the A3, my A3 at least. Some people say I got a defective one, but who knows. Okay, so distance is great. I'm still in full video, full control. It seems a little choppy in the FPV, but doable. I mean, as long as the video is smooth, I'm just rotating the gimbal up and down. I still have great uh, control. We're 2,000 feet away, so. Yeah, it's doing fine, guys. Let's do a quick little return to home, uh, see how that works. So I'm gonna press this button on the screen on the left. I'm going to return to my takeoff point. And um, all the while, too, we're looking at the gimbal uh, level, right? Now, you'll see that the hill is sloped down to the left, but the clouds are pretty level. That's because I'm on the side of a really steep mountain here on Maui, on Haleakala Mountain. So um, disregard that slant. That is the mountain, but the gimbal seems nice and straight. So... So far, what I'm seeing, guys, the Xeno is now worth it as far as this far into this review. We're going to try a few more things. Let's see if we can rotate the gimbal down. Yes, we can while we're coming home. I'm going to try a couple more things. I want to rotate the head. Whoops. I was pressing the wrong button. No. So can't do any kind of rotation except for the gimbal when you're coming home, okay? Keep that in mind. But this video looks smooth, man. Let's do this. Let's just rotate it down. There's a car coming down the road. 
We're going to get Sinai in the picture real quick to just do a uh, maybe circle around point tracking. We'll see how that's improved. I got to say the colors look nice and rich from my FPV. Again, I'll have that 4K up so you guys can see that. Let's see how close it wants to land from its takeoff point. I don't think I'm going to let it land, but let's just see where it will try to land. I'm not going to touch any of the buttons here. Let's see if they've improved that. I think it was pretty good to begin with in the first review too. I think it was just a few feet off. But we do always try to like check those things, right? So coming on down, I'm gonna lift the gimbal back up. Aircraft cannot perform the function. I just saw something that was weird. So it's about five feet away. I'm gonna push up here and I'm gonna try to cancel the return to home. I just pressed it once here in the hardware button and it just totally canceled that out, so that's great. I do have two batteries today, guys, so if we don't finish what I wanna do on this one, I'll pop in that other one. This is something I wanted to do, just real quick, before I get Sanai in here and we track and do some, some tracking. I wanna do this, I wanna move around. See, that's that barometer. Looks like they fixed it a little bit, but it still wants to kind of come down a bit. Remember in my first 10 month ago review, this thing, man, if you, if you moved around, it took a while to like lock in. Let's see if it still has that issue. Come forward, let off. It seems a lot better now. Man, the first time I did it, I would stop 10 months ago and the thing would just go like this. It would do like a toilet bowl for a second and then come back in. So it's perfectly fine seeming now, which is great. Okay, so how about we go up here and get some photos of the uh, West Maui Mountains real quick. I'm just gonna go up a little bit higher. We got a nice aerial view. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take photos while the video is running, but let's just try it. I'm gonna hit the photo button. Maybe it's, it might be taking like a screenshot, but I'm gonna stop the video for a sec. Boom. And now I'm gonna take some photos. So I'm going into photo mode. It says switch to photo mode. And let's just take a couple of photos of these West Maui Mountains. We'll go all the way up with the gimbal. Take a few photos. Wow, it just takes it really quick. Interesting. And we'll also take some kind of pointing at the ground in different increments. One photo. We'll do one here, photo. We'll have these popping up guys so you can see what they're all about. We're at 45% power. This is all the way down on the gimbal, another photo. And we're gonna go back to recording and let's start our 4K recording again, boom. All right, seamless switching and recording seems really, really good. Again, I'll let you guys be the judge of how this video looks, but it's looking really good to me, um, you know, on my phone. I'm pulling full throttle down and, yeah, the, the height and the distance and everything, all these this telemetry, seems like it's working really, really good. Letting off, and it's locking in way better than it did before. So congratulations, uh, Hubson, your updates really have improved it. So let's do a little bit of tracking here. And um, I don't know how enthusiastic Sanai is gonna be right now for the tracking, but maybe she'll help us out. Battery is 40%. Okay, we're still gonna try it though. Let's just kind of get up here a little bit. Tilt the camera down. The gimbal does seem like it's doing really good. And let's go into some of these advanced features. So we'll do follow mode. Not follow mode or high winds. Okay. So go a little more over there so you're separated from me. <laughs> That's good. And I'm gonna try the box. There we go, okay. It's working. I'm going to press go. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and just jog around that first small goal and come back. Just do a slow jog. Oh, stop. 
it already lost her. Okay. So still pretty crappy on the tracking. Okay. So it's searching again. Let's try that one more time. Select target. Okay, if it doesn't know how to track this, then that's its own fault, right? Okay, go ahead. Just walk slowly first. Yeah, so it's pretty garbage at tracking still. It, it re-tracked her, but it's, yeah. So don't even use this for tracking. Let's try an orbit. Let's see if this works. Because the tracking is just garbage. Pardon my French, but that's just how it is. You guys gotta know this. Let's try orbit mode. Okay, um, understood. Transmitter location is set. Set the location. Oh, is it gonna let me do this? <laughs> Let's go over her and I don't know if it's gonna track me or if it's gonna track her. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to go right over her. Where the heck is she? There she is, okay. Let's try this. Okay, so I'm centered over here. Go back into orbit. Next. Just execute immediately. Okay. So what's it gonna do? Hide. I don't know what it's orbiting. <laughs> oh, it's orbiting me, okay. Alright, so I guess by default it's gonna order the orbit the controller. Um, since it's moving to the left, let's try to speed it up. Okay, so that's good. At least you know it's gonna orbit the controller. Wow, I just made it go the other way by pushing to the left. Let's push all the way to the right. There we go. Battery 25%. So kind of like some of the older drones, you still have to adjust your gimbal. It's not gonna track it in orbit. But there you go, guys. There's an orbit. Let's try to give it some altitude. Whoa, just flew way off. It kind of lost its orbit when I gave it altitude. I don't know where it's going. See that? So it messed up its whole heading and everything when I gave it some uh, throttle up. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. I don't know what it's doing now. It's, it's um, bearing is completely off. So we'll stop that. So they haven't really improved this kind of wonky camera tracking and stuff. So if you were to buy this one, I'd really just buy it for basic flight and 4K GPS drone, you know what I mean? Let's get the camera back up. Still kind of keeping an eye on that gimbal. Let's see if we spin it around. Was that, will that gimbal stay horizon level? You see the ocean? That's level horizon. So let's spin it all the way around and go back to the ocean and see if it's still level. Yep. Good enough for how fast I just spun it around. Let's try the other way. Again, recording this, guys, in the video. Whoops. Where's, where was the ocean? Let's go back to where we were. Yeah, so keeping horizon level great. That's awesome. Battery is only 20%. It has been forced. Okay, I didn't touch anything, and it says it's been forced to return home. Thanks, hon. What? Yeah, you can go back to the bench. Thanks for your help. So this one will, guys, um, when it hits about 20%, it is going to return to home. So you really don't have to worry about it. You can be doing whatever you want to do. And uh, you can trust it to come on home. So let's see this time how close it gets and if we can stop it. I can still push up, but it's really slow. Pressing return to home real quick, and that stopped it. So it was gonna land right here, which was only about two or three feet away. You can see how stable this thing is now. Look at this, leaps and bounds better. <laughs> Hovering perfectly, and it's in the slow voltage, 17%. 
So really impressed at their um, their updates, guys. That was awesome. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do in the same video. We'll land this. This is a new battery, and then I have one battery that's used. So I'm gonna go ahead and land this down. And what we'll do in the next battery is we'll do a quick little range test. Come down slowly. Yeah, so if you're just really slow on your thumbs, gosh, this one's working great now. It's just those tracking features are kind of not really worth it. So, and of course you also have like Google Maps, right? I'll have that up on the screen too. So you can use that as well if you wanted to. Okay guys, well boy, guess what? I th think my battery in my hat cam died, but so that's kind of a bummer from that initial flight, but I'll still have had my separate audio recording and my screen up and the video up for you guys. I have a new battery in here now and let's get this thing started. Let's just go ahead and try to do a manual launch this time and we're gonna fly out that way, do a range test and see how far we can get. Let's arm the motors. Uh, I think this one was down and out. Anyway, here we go. So let's go up here. Let it just idle for a second. Give it some height. 100% battery and we're now at 20 satellites. So we should have like no issues with this test. So we're just gonna immediately start flying this way. And I'm just gonna kind of leave it in. Oh, are those birds over there or drones? I guess those are birds flying. I don't know if you guys saw that in the video, but they're just flying across. So I'm gonna go up a ways just so we don't hit any power lines. And I'm gonna shoot um, straight that way, kind of like right where those palm trees are way over there. So let's just go full throttle forward and we'll go up a bit. Kind of turn, make sure I'm going in that straight line there. There we go, get a little bit of height so maybe we're out of the bubbles of Wi-Fi. Just go up a bit. There we go. And let me turn the camera down so I can kind of see where I'm going. I'm just gonna go straight through this direction so there's minimal houses and whatnot. So we're approaching a thousand feet. Again, I'll have all the recording up on the screen. And we're also seeing how this um, auto camera settings are in the white balance and the brightness and exposure too. You see how I went up and the ground got kind of dark. Rotate the gimbal down a bit and the ground kind of brightens up a little bit. So we'll just fly kind of right through this farmland here. Not to really be over any houses. And meanwhile guys, remember I'm recording my... Um, screen right so you guys will see that how good the video is and what I like to do is I like to keep kind of rotating the gimbal up and down so you can kind of really get a feeling of how this FPV is looking and I'm just pointing the controller directly at the drone with my antennas almost straight up they're kind of like in a little bit of a Y formation um, but yeah man look at this 3,000 feet the video is getting a little pixelated on my Android phone, but I still have a solid connection. Let's see, what's our height? 218 feet. Oh, okay, we're losing it. I'm going to try to go up in height even more, possibly maybe get away from aircraft disconnected. So I disconnected at about 3,500 feet, okay? So that was the range test for me. I wonder if I, I don't even have this phone in, um, let me put it in airplane mode. I didn't have it in airplane mode. Let's try it again, let's come back. And then once we get connection back here, we'll stop our return to home. Is it in return to home or is it stopped? Okay, yeah, it's still, it just stopped there. Okay, <laughs> let's turn around again and let's go out again. 
which will go right in this direction right about there so full stick forward and let's just see if maybe we can get a little further in airplane mode looks like I do have full controller and video signal you see that and it just dropped all the way down at 3500 feet so maybe they still have kind of a hard set I don't have any limitations I don't believe let me just check it real quick on the actual um, range limit firmware versions let's just double check that while it's coming back so control transfer Wi-Fi channels nope that's the gimbal map here's others here Imperial compass calibration yeah I'm not seeing any limitations nope I'm not seeing any uh, options for anything else so it's just sitting there wow so be careful with that it's gonna come back until it's in signal and then if you think it's coming home and you're not sure you better just hit return home so I'm just gonna hit return home now pressing it one time and let's see if it goes into it nope let's try press and hold there we go okay it's coming on back so 3,500 feet is what I could get here at this park there are some power lines kind of all the way around the park and like there's a fence here I did go pretty high I went up to 222 feet you know what I'll try to do real quick I know this is gonna be a long video but let's just try it let's go up to 400 feet a lot of people tell me go up higher and you'll get better range so let's try it so let's go up to 400 just under 400 again remember my phone is in airplane mode okay turn around directly in the opposite direction and go straight out okay still pointing right at it with my controllers with my antennas perpendicular we're at just about 400 feet let's see if we can get over 3500 without it completely dropping it might be a hard-coded range limit is what I'm thinking because it's so weird how we have full signal you see that and then watch when we hit 34 to 35 oh a little better nope look at that all the signal on the controller just drops and it says disconnected so I don't know I think it's still a hard hard-coded thing so we'll go ahead and um, automatic return let's let it come back that kind of worries me that it'll come back and then once it connects re reconnects to the controller it just goes into GPS mode so make sure you guys hit return to home otherwise you're just gonna sit sit there all day until it um, runs out of battery and needs to come home but at least that's a great feature that they implemented in this I'm not sure if it had it originally in the 10 month ago review but it does now so that's awesome don't have to worry about it uh, landing somewhere let's see if we can let's see how this good this video and this gimbal is I'm still recording in 4k it's been super dry here guys we're having drought in Hawaii on Maui at least it's a little more wet up here in Kula, but you can see it's still pretty dry. That's usually all green. The summer has been horrible. But that's how the 4K footage looks and pretty pixelated on my screen. You can see on the recorded FPV, we'll pick this gimbal up, see how smooth the video can be while we're picking it up and coming home. You guys got some nice pools out here. I'm just at this park right here. What are we coming home at? We're coming home at 20 miles per hour. Just about. A little fluctuation between 17 and 20. Okay, but that gimbal is still perfectly level. So uh, once we land, we'll go through the improvements. If you can't remember what throughout this review, what we were talking about. So we'll make sure we touch base on all the improvements from our original review because there are a lot of them but again some of the things still kind of work the same as well right 
So we'll let this thing come home, see how close it gets to its landing pad. We'll let it automatically land. I'm not seeing any wonky control issues though. At distance, it seems to do what I want it to do. I remember my original review at the park, man. Um, was it my first or second flight test? It just wanted to like go off in a weird direction one time. So it looks like they took care of all those issues. So I'll just let it come on down. See how close to this landing pad it gets. Still recording everything. Let's see if I do hit this camera button. It's taking some, it's beeping, so it's doing something, but I think it's just doing a screenshot of the video when you do that. It's not actually using the camera sensor to take a picture. It's just like a video clip screenshot. Anyway, coming on down, 39% power left. So yeah, man, up until 3,500 feet, we had a pretty good signal. That's good to know. Go ahead and move our camera back up. Again, I have this thing at like 10 or 15% speed on the gimbal, remember guys? So that's where it wants to land. I'm gonna press return to home to stop it, it stops super quick. A Little bit of fluctuation again, but not bad at all for not having any bottom sensors. So again, if I just bring it down right here, again, that's uh, one, two to three feet away. Not bad at all. So we'll land it here. It feels a little bit robotic still on the uh, movements. Not entirely smooth. The altitude is really smooth, but when you're trying to get those really minute movements, it seems to want to just like jerk a little bit. So that might be a little bit of a con for some people, but a small price to pay for uh, for how much imp how much they've improved this thing. And let's talk about a little pros and cons, guys. I'm super impressed at the updates. So Hubson, congrats to you guys for really updating your Zeno. Um, this is now since you dropped the price between two and three hundred dollars. Guys, I'll go ahead and have like the link down below in the description with a coupon because I'm thinking this is going to be one of your best first GPS quadcopters now. I was really disappointed at the Afimi A3 um, range was only like 600 to a thousand feet for me. Whether it's a glitch or not, maybe that was the issue, but that is a great quad too. It's just, it had crappy range for me, but it did handle great. But you know what? They improved just about everything except the tracking still sucks on this. Tracking is not good at all. The um, circle around point, not bad if you don't touch any of the, any of the controls, but once you touch that, um, the vertical stick on the throttle, you just totally throw the whole thing all the way off. Somebody else is flying a drone out here. I think I hear a Mavic. It seemed like a little bit more range, 3,500 feet, which is fine for like a beginner quadcopter. The return to home when you have a low battery is a great feature. You're not gonna lose it. It's gonna come home when the battery gets too low. It handles great, just a little bit of that fluctuation in the altitude hold, but that is to be expected because it has no ground sensors, right? Yep, there's a Mavic up there. The handling was fantastic. So they totally improved that. I don't know if you remember my first review, but I would make sharp turns and it would just drop and hit the ground. We didn't try sport mode on this time, but I think that's good enough to really see that they've updated this. I do think it's a decent buy now. When it first came out, it was not a decent buy, but now I think it is. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.